morning, YouTube. All right, it is time for autumnal flavors, and that means we are going to make something wonderful tonight. We're doing a braised chicken with apple cider and butternut squash, and it all goes together in one pan. Huh? Not too bad. It tastes great, and your family's going to love it. All right, let's cook, y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, we're going to start by making a kind of a marinade for our chicken. So I've got four boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Use whatever you want. If you want skin on, go for it. If you want to use bone in, that's fine too. Take a little longer to cook though. These will take eh, 20 minutes. Uh, bone in, 35. Okay, so a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And to this I'm adding a teaspoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of paprika, teaspoon garlic powder, teaspoon kosher salt. And this, we just make a little paste. All right, let me turn my water on because I'm going to have chicken hands in a minute. Just a trickle, but this way I don't have to touch my faucet. This is going to go right over the top. We're going to give it a little massage. Just want to get that paste, that flavorful paste, all over. All the little crevices. Just like that. We're going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. You can do this up to a couple hours. Almost a dry brine, but it's not dry. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. All right, I've got a, a, actually it's a Dutch oven. <laughs> I've got a Dutch oven over here with another, about another tablespoon of oil in it. I've got it over medium-ish heat. You hear the sizzle? Here we go. Ooh, nice and hot. You're gonna try to get just a little bit of color on here. I don't have quite enough real estate to not crowd these, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Here we go. That way. You don't wanna crowd them too much because if they're too close together, where they touch will just generate steam and they won't get, I don't know, any kind of caramelization. There's no way for the Maillard reaction to happen. All right, so all we're doing here is kind of browning on both sides, and it's boneless, skinless breast. So it's going to take a bit of an effort to get some color on it, but not too bad. And in the meantime, I've got my oven preheating to 425 degrees. All right, so we've got a little color on the first side. Not tons and tons, but, you know, a little bit. That's nice. See? Perfect. All right, so we're just going to flip these guys over. We're going to give them a few minutes to pick up some color on this side too. All right, here we go. Probably five minutes per side. So I'm going to give it a guess. Well, <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're just setting these aside for just a minute because we're going to build a braising liquid. Kind of a sauce, I guess. Find a spoon. Nope, whatever this is, Dutch oven. I've got a cup of apple cider. I also have a couple teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of brown sugar, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Y'all know I love my Dijon. Best stuff on the planet. About a tablespoon of soy sauce just kind of give it some richness. And we're adding Dijon's best friend. We've got three tablespoons of butter. <laughs> this makes me happy. All right, so we're just gonna let this kind of simmer. We're gonna stir it together until that butter melts and it gets smooth. Give me two minutes. There we go. Fair disclosure, and I tasted this, but taste yours at this point. And I 
think it needs just a teaspoon of kosher salt, just a little bit. And then I'm adding a big fat handful of fresh thyme. You do not have to worry about pulling it off of the little stems, just right in there. That's how we go. All right, and then I have one very, this was a small butternut squash. Matter of fact, it was so small that there really weren't even any seeds in it. It just had like a little, little spot about that big where it had started to think about having some seeds. And I just cut that up, peeled it and cut it up. One big fat yellow onion. I have two very small Granny Smith apples was perfect because for some reason at Thanksgiving, <laughs> which was five days ago, Ricky and I, all three decided we needed to buy apples. I don't know what we were doing. <laughs> we didn't even end up making an apple pie. Blaine made one and then he took it to his friend's giving. But then we had like literally 12 pounds of apples. So we're doing a lot of apple stuff. All right. And then we're gonna take our chicken breasts right here. And these are going to go right back in. And do you see the juices? See all that? Make sure that goes in here too. That's all flavor. Perfect. I gotta get my... Make sure I get all of that. All right, so this is going to get a cover on it. And it's going to go into our hot oven, 425 for 25 minutes. All right, I gave it an extra five minutes simply because I wanted to make sure, I don't, I couldn't remember if I had put it in the oven while it was boiling or not. Well, how about I not put my fingers over the camera lens? That is perfect. Now I know I'm supposed to let the chicken rest, which, it will be better if I let it rest. Using a fork, it goes right through that butternut, so we know the butternut is cooked. Grab a plate because I'm about to hurt myself. See, it's nice and tender. I love butternut. And our apples are just at the point where they're falling apart. Mm. Perfectly sweet. Mm. That's tart. It's Love Granny Smith apples. Okay, so this is it. Make sure you've rested your chicken for 20 minutes. And that, y'all, is how to do butternut squash and chicken in one pan. So good.